So it's possible to do these experiments. It's possible to know the answer. And it's possible at that point to make really fact-based judgments about who these things help, how much it helps them, um, and, and who should actually use them. Well, how about generalizing in the real world? Well, again, here there's data. Here is cited in one of these papers, uh, Willis et al., 2006, in Journal of the American Medical Association, where again, it was demonstrated that in a speed-based training program, as well as in some other classroom-based training programs, folks who went through these showed a protection against decline in the activities that required the same independent living over a five-year period. Now, that's real data that those things have those properties. There's another paper shown behind that is completely invisible, but in work of Carly and Ball, remember, we've seen that in that speed training program, folks who do it show improvements on real world activities like reading medication information from a bottle or looking up a phone number in a book. And in fact, next week is the Transportation Research Board meeting, which probably there's zero overlap, but you can keep your hats out in the press release. Uh, Carly and Ball's been making an incredibly exciting announcement about real world functional consequences of this kind of training on driving seniors. I should also mention as a fair disclosure, as Gary did, that these papers that involve this speed training that I referred to, Positive Science uh, acquired that technology last year and built it into our new visual training program called Insight. It's been wonderful because we now have a training program that's got you know 15 years of solid randomized controlled clinical trial evidence that it works. Wow, I like the yellow. <laughs> Is that how they show me that I have the book and I need to finish them around? <laughs> So finally, I have another great point, is is it enjoyable? Well, this is a great question. We can answer this question anecdotally. Uh, you know, we had hundreds of people calling us, uh, emailing us about their enjoyment of the training programs that we've built. Uh, I'm sure that many people do who build these kinds of training programs. But we can answer this quantitatively as well. I don't know if any, we have any consumer marketing geeks out there in the audience, but there's a quantitative measure of the interest of people who use something and recommending it called the Net Promoter Store. It essentially measures how many people are willing to tell their friends, I like this so much that you should do it too. We recently took a look at that with regard to our training programs and saw we had a Net Promoter Store in the 30s, which is equivalent to big, successful consumer software products like Quicken and TurboTax that most people like it. So it's possible to know the answers to Gary's questions, and I think it's important that we do, because the way this market is going to segment out, in my opinion, as well as segmenting out in line green, is in, uh, in three different areas. And uh, Gary made this point. You know, there's going to be an area here that's called games, and um, there's really going to be no validation around these. No one's going to be doing clinical trials, for the most part. We don't know if they work. But hey, they're going to be fun, and I wouldn't tell anyone, and I don't think anyone else about it, that they shouldn't do games to enjoy themselves. You know, I like to play rock bands but other people might like to claim brain age. God bless them. However, there's going to be a different segment, which was alluded to also, called cognitive training. And I think in this segment, we're going to see companies making investments in real science and doing clinical trials, and are making very specific data-driven claims about who benefits, how much they benefit, in what way they benefit, and why they benefit. That's going to have more validation, and as a result, the price is going to be higher. It's the same kind of investment in science. And then finally, I'll point out, there's going to be a third segment beyond this, which is in clinical. So it's just a, it's a legal fact that if you make a medical device, which includes a piece of software, and want to make claims about its efficacy in clinical indications like Alzheimer's disease, or mild cognitive impairment, or schizophrenia, or chemo brain, it's a legal fact that if you do that, you come under the FDA's regulation. You will have to go do trials with the FDA to demonstrate that the marketing claims you make are true. That segment doesn't exist yet, but it is coming soon. Because this basic science absolutely can be applied to those real afflictions of cognitive functions that Gary alluded to earlier. So it's going to be an exciting time to see how this shakes out over the next few years. So I'm going to wrap up. Um, you know, what's my main point? Well, I asked the question, does brain fitness work? And of course, the answer to the question is complicated, like it always is. The right kind of brain fitness training can drive specific real world changes that are important that people notice. But not everything works. Not everything works in the same way. Different things work differently, and I think it's important to show and measure what those things are and how they work differently. So we're on the cusp of a revolution, right? This is absolutely going to change everything about aging over the next 20 years. Dan pointed out this was the generation that did physical fitness. That was a revolution, this will be too. We don't want this to become like nutraceuticals. If you look at the market for nutraceuticals like Ginkgo, it's just a disaster. Um, Ginkgo might work or it might not. The largest trials suggest that it don't, but the small trials continue to set the way. Either way, it's a disaster, right? If it does work, we don't know, because the Ginkgo manufacturers do not have the incentive to do the trial to show it. If it does not work, well, people are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on this. It could be better spent on any one of the number of things here that Consumer Electronics Show. So I'll wrap up and say, um, data matters. That's how we're going to sort this out. Thank you.